Okay, so this is a video for the using specific heat capacity to find temperature change uh, topic. And this particular reaction is uh, specified as identified as an endothermic reaction. So what do we have here? Well, let's look at the problem and figure out what information we're given. We have a chemical reaction that takes place inside of a flask that is submerged in a water bath. So here's our water bath and there is our flask. And inside of the flask is where the reaction is taking place. The water bath contains 9.7 kilograms of water and 27.6 uh, degrees Celsius is its starting temperature of the water in the water bath. So they want us to calculate the new temperature of the water bath after the reaction has gone forward. So what kind of reaction is this again? It's an endothermic reaction. So already off the bat, I can, I can predict that the new temperature of the water bath is going to what? Go up or go down? I can predict that the new temperature is going to go down. Why? Look at the schematic of the, of the reaction. The reaction is taking place inside of the flask, and the flask is sitting in a water bath. Well, the reaction is endothermic. What do endothermic reactions do? they absorb heat or energy from the surroundings. So if the reaction is taking place in here and the reaction is endothermic, that means it's going to absorb heat from its surroundings, which is the water bath. So water, uh, the heat from the, from the water is going to be transferred into the flask, into the system of the reaction. So the new temperature of the water bath should go down. The final temperature should be lower than the initial temperature which was 27.6, so our final answer should be lower than that. So let's look at the information they give us, okay? They say that uh, we can assume the specific heat capacity of water under these conditions to be 4.18, and the units of specific heat are joules per gram uh, times Kelvin in this case. Now, I will note that the units of specific heat uh, can change in regards to what you see here. Of course, all of these units can change, but typically in the problems that you're facing, you may also see the specific heat given as 4.18 with the units of joules per gram times degrees Celsius. And you may wonder which one is correct. Well, because of the relationship between Kelvin and Celsius, Either one of these can be used. It just depends on what the units of the given temperature in the problem happen to be. So the first given that we have identified, again, is specific heat. And specific heat in the text is defined as the amount of heat or energy needed to raise. So that's where the J comes in. Joules is a unit of energy. The amount of energy needed to raise one gram of a substance by one Kelvin or by one degree Celsius, okay? So it takes 4.18 joules of heat to raise one gram of water. This is the specific heat of water. One gram of water by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. The value is the same, of course. Now, specific heat uh, is represented by a couple of different variables. In Alex, the variable for specific heat is a lowercase c. So that is what we'll use here, okay? In the text, specific heat is represented by lowercase x, s. And in some texts, specific heat is represented by a capital C with a subscript of an s, specific heat capacity. Uh, all of these are referring to the same thing, specific heat capacity, or we're going to use the lowercase c just to be consistent with Alex. All right, so let's identify our other givens. We are given the specific heat capacity of water. So here it is, the specific heat capacity of water. We are also given a mass of water. This mass of water is 9.70 kilograms. Okay. Now, right off the bat, I know I'm going to want to convert this mass of water from kilograms to grams because look at the units for mass in my specific heat capacity, grams. So let's go ahead and convert this to grams. 
to be 9,700 grams. If you are doing these problems and you're getting the wrong answer, chances are this hasn't been converted to grams so that the units can cancel with the units from specific heat capacity. All right, so we have a specific heat capacity given, we have a mass of water given, and we have this given as well. During the reaction, 96.9 .9 kilojoules of heat flows out of the bath and into the flask. The letter Q represents heat flow. So we have lowercase q, and they tell us how much heat flows out of the bath and into the flask, 96.9 kilojoules. Listen to me carefully here because this will also uh, uh, cause you to get a wrong answer here. The thing about thermochemistry and when we're dealing with Q or heat flow is that Q has a sign convention. It's, Q is either going to be positive or negative. And you know if that Q is positive or negative from the information given. Here it says that 96.9 .9 kilojoules of heat flows out of the bath and into the flask. So heat is leaving the water bath and going into the flask, right? They give us the mass of the water bath. They give us the specific heat capacity of the water in the water bath. And they give us the initial temperature of the water in the water bath. They also tell us how much heat leaves the water bath. So when heat is leaving the substance or the sample that you're talking about, then the Q, the sign for Q, for that value is going to be negative. Okay, so again, Q is negative in this case because heat is flowing out of the water bath and is being lost. And again, you also have to check the units for Q as well. The units for Q here are kilojoules, and the units for a specific heat here are joules. So in order to make sure my units cancel cleaning when I multiply these values together, I need to convert this from kilojoules to joules, and that'll be negative 96,900 joules, okay? So Q, just remember, represents heat flow. Heat is being lost by the water, so I need to place a negative sign there. If the water were going up in temperature because heat was flowing into the water, so that would mean the reaction in the flask would have to be exothermic, then the sign for Q here would be positive. All right, so let's see what other information we're given. We're given a mass of water. We are given the amount of heat lost by the water. We are given the specific heat capacity of the water. And we also have here the initial temperature of the water in the water bath. So the initial temperature, I'll put this here as TI, initial temperature is 27.6 degrees Celsius. Now notice the units for the temperature given degrees Celsius, so that's why I would use this for my specific heat capacity because it has the units of degrees Celsius in it. But there's no conversion needed. Unlike the mass and Q, there's no need to convert this to Kelvin because the value for the specific heat capacity is the same here regardless of if it's Kelvin or degrees Celsius, okay? We just need to pick one unit and stick with it. So because they give me Celsius, I'm going to use this one because it's got the units of degrees Celsius in it. So the big question is, how can we solve this problem and how can we calculate the new temperature of the water bath? Well, there are different ways of doing this. This is the way that I like to do it. We're going to use the equation that relates each of these things that relates temperature to heat flow to mass and specific heat capacity. Here's the equation. Q is equal to M times C times delta T. So what does this equation tell me? Well, it tells me that if I know the specific heat and the amount of a substance, then the change in the sample's temperature will tell us the amount of heat that has been absorbed or released in a particular process. So if you look at this equation, you'll notice that for temperature, I have here delta T, whereas here as I have 
initial temperature. Well, what does the sign or the symbol, that little triangle symbol, delta symbol mean? It means change in. Okay? So a change in anything, in this case we're talking about change in temperature, is equal to final minus initial. So the change in temperature is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Guess what? They want me to find the new temperature, new temperature of the water bath. They want me to find the final temperature. After the reaction has proceeded and stopped, what is the final temperature of the water when it started at 27.6 degrees Celsius? I can find the final temperature as long as I have this and this. We are given the initial temperature. Here it is. We're given that. We can find the change in temperature from this equation. So if I have this and this, I can solve for the final temperature. The final temperature is equal to the change in temperature plus the initial temperature. So this is not the only way to find final temperature, but this is the way that I choose to do it. I choose to break it up like this and just solve for delta T. So here are, are our givens. And these are the two equations that we're going to use to help us find the final answer. So here I've set up the problem again with our givens and the equations, the two equations that we are going to use to find our answer, the final temperature of the water bath. So let's plug in our variables into the equations to get our answer. So delta T, we're going to use the first equation here. Delta T is equal to heat flow divided by mass times specific heat capacity. The change in temperature is equal to the heat flow, which is negative 96,900 joules, divided by the mass, which is 9,700 grams, times the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18 joules per gram times uh, degrees Celsius. So we should get a change in temperature here. Let's check our units. This is why we converted our units. Because grams times inverse grams cancels. Also joules divided by joules cancels. And I'm left with degrees Celsius. Is that a unit of temperature? Absolutely. So I know I set it up correctly. And the value I get is negative 2.3899 degrees Celsius. You may wonder, why is it negative? Remember, delta T stands for change in temperature. So that means the temperature went down. The temperature of the water bath went down. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because heat left the water bath and went into the reaction that was occurring in the flask. So this should go down. So now that we have delta T, let's plug it into the second equation to find the final temperature, which is delta T plus the initial temperature. So the final temperature is equal to negative 2.3899 degrees Celsius plus the initial temperature of 27.6 degrees Celsius. That gives me a final temperature of 25.210 degrees Celsius. And they ask me to round my answer to three significant digits. So my final temperature would be 25.2 degrees Celsius. Now I take a look, I say, did the temperature go down? Is my final temperature less than my initial? Yes, because this was an endothermic reaction and the reaction was absorbing heat from the water bath. Now these problems are very easy to work with because you can always check your answer. What we got here for delta T, I can plug back in to this equation to see if I get my Q and the same here. So you can check yourself, and I encourage you to check yourself as you solve for each variable to make sure you have the right value and that you converted your units correctly. So 25.2 degrees Celsius is our final answer.